No, no. Who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. With founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean, leukemia trust. African Caribbean, leukemia trust. Af- Af- African Caribbean, leukemia trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. No, no, who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. No, no, no. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. With founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Af- Af- African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun Hashtag no jokes is really second to none No, no, who's there? Hashtag, hashtag who? Hashtag no joke Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. With founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Af- 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 African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. No, no, who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about you it. You learn more about yourself from having since you've had children. Yeah. I realised how horrible I really am. Yeah. charity. That's the ACLT helping people in need with founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Af- 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 African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun Hashtag no jokes is really second to none First of all, when someone's told they need a match They look within the family If there's no matches there They look at the unrelated donor registers around the world And so few black people had ever registered. Our bone marrow specialist said to us that Daniel had a one in a quarter million chance finding a donor. I believe that this societal conditioning is what is damaging people's relationships. Because how can you condition uh, or say that women need to be independent? And then once, like Curtis is saying, then once you're in a relationship, it's all, well, I need this, this, this and this. And my dad used to do this for me. And my uncle, no, I think what we need to teach is everybody has a certain amount of independence. Work on themselves. So when people come together, they can start to build. I don't see why there has to be a dependence or an independence. Just be you, know what your thoughts are. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Af- 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 African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun Hashtag no jokes is really second to none No, no, who's there? Hashtag, hashtag who? Hashtag no joke Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it no jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes. Yeah, the no demand for organ no transplants, no especially from the kidneys, are record numbers in terms of the black community, in terms of need, the need, but the supply line is shockingly low.
In this day and age, it is unacceptable for someone to have to call 999 from their hospital bed. It sounds crazy, right? But that's what Evan Nathan Smith had to do. If he was given a blood transfusion when he needed it, it was likely that would have saved his life. We are United by Blood, three black organizations that have come together to say to the black community, we need, we need you. you. We need you. I'm from ACLT. Black Mums Up Front. I'm from Selfie for Life. Less than 1% of our community donates blood, although sickle cell is one of the fastest growing blood disorders in our community and requires regular blood donations. We need you. We need you. And we need you on the 19th and 20th of June to join us at United by Blood, donating in memory of Evan Nathan Smith. Saturday, 19th of June. And Sunday, the 20th of June. Will, Will we, we see, see you there? there? I sincerely hope so, because uh, ACLT are our sponsors, and that's what we're working towards, giving them support on the 19th or 20th. Um, I got to speak to a, a young lady this week who's suffering from sickle cell at 11 years old, a little monster. We're, we're going to have her on next week. You'll absolutely love her. Um, good day to those of you who've never tuned in before. Welcome to hashtag uh, no joke all sorts of stories i could tell you but we better get on with the show because we've got one of those shows lined up uh, for you today each and every sunday uh, from midday we're here we're discussing it from our perspective in our way and it's fully inclusive it wants people to dance and get involved uh, but but it is slightly different and hopefully we can bring it to a broader platform i'm um, talking about broad the two left and the right hand are here. Uh, Curtis Walker, how are you? I'm very well, sir. Good afternoon um, from the Broadway. Yeah? <laughs> You're on the Broadway. I love the new trailer in. Love the new trailer. Uh, this kid, Kieran, I mean, he just got talent. I mean, yeah. I've got to be nice to him because hopefully he can look after me you and dmt so so where, where are you from you're, you're from the the broadway broadway, the broadway. okay broadway. let's go to the the broad walk now and get dmt uh, on <laughs> oh yeah oh, wow oh, yeah oh, look at you oh you've got yeah. a t-shirt how did you get that <laughs> because does of it, the postal system does it does it fit is everything okay <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, look, before you we look get fantastic, in... You look fantastic, Donna. You look gorgeous. Thank you very much. Good morning. As Good always. Evening. As always. As always, Donna. You are welcome, and they love you. You know what I mean? I said, we've got to get rid of her. We've got to get someone new. And they go, no, no, we love her. And I go, okay. Well, you won't love her in a little while when you find out as much about her as I do. Tell us <laughs> about this, Donna. Oh, that was me on Friday. I... I gave my first ever TEDx talk at uh, TEDx Labrick Grove at the Design Museum. And uh, it was, wow, it's one of those experiences of my life I will never forget. You, you were really nervous last week. You asked, um, how did it go? How did you feel? Um, I don't remember much. I've watched the recording of myself about three times. I kind of walked up and then I remember walking back to my seat and whatever happened in between, I don't really, but everybody, my oh. cousin and my sister were there and they were like, you smashed it. You, you gave it. Yeah. So I, I did my best. I did my best. We, 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 I mean, none of us expected anything else. Let's just uh, bring the boss lady on. Uh, boss lady, how are you? Hello. Good afternoon, kings and queens. Love the earrings, Donna. Looking mighty yeah. fine. Hello, Thank Curtis. You Hello. Good morning. You're all right. Looking Good morning. Good morning. yourself. Oh, look, I've, I'm, I'm different. I've got a white yes. one. Can you see yeah. mine? You've cut the sleeves off. Top. I've cut the sleeves off. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Sorry. Wait, I could do the same thing. Wait now. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, boss lady, look, we're going to try and have some fun, but it, it, it's, a, it's a pretty heavy one. You know, I always like to try and start it light. Um, should I? Should I? Yes. Right. Look, look. Right. So, um, go, Donna. You first. Water, Which one of them? Watered milk. F. F. Right. So everybody, take a look. And while we're doing the heavy stuff, we can have some fun. Donna's F. 
boss lady doesn't have it unless it's made with <laughs> whatever, whatever. Is no, there no, any one of these? no, I used to, I used to like no, the bourbons. Bourbons. Mm. So, the, the, uh, the I. letter, please. So, so I. Donna's an F, you're an I. Curtis, you can only have one. I've got, really? <laughs> I, you know, I'm pretty much all of them, but I, I'm an I as well. Bourbon, 44. Oh, see? Said, well, 45 okay. P a pack. That gets me right now. Yeah. I'm a K. Yeah, I'm you okay. are. Okay, what's I K? Oh, what is K? I thought you'd be a C, Eddie. It looks like the short, the short bread, the short whatever. That's, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Right, and, and shut up, Curtis. Okay? Who's not having any of your foolishness today? I've had enough of you. Right. right. Um, Boss lady, um, please keep those coming in. I mean, that that's the light side. Uh, as you probably know, there's some pretty tough stories on the agenda uh, uh, today because today's a day of anniversaries or this week yeah. is a week of anniversaries uh, and we'll be marking those. Uh, please get your comments in, get your thoughts in, get your questions in. Uh, Boss Lady will collate all of those and then we'll get them um, for you. Uh, thanks very much, Boss Lady. Bye-bye. Um, this gentleman um, who's on the panel is a guy I I've been wanting to get on the panel from the morning really from early from very early on in the series and it just didn't happen i don't know if he never saw the messages or whatever um he's a firebrand i mean i have so much admiration for him and he's one of the guys that lots of people won't know about you should know about him with him without him there would not be a windrush day i don't believe without uh, him that whole experience would even be worse than it is, and it's in the news again. Uh, he came up with 100 black uh, Britons and fabulous. I think in some schools they're allowing that in. Uh, he's an OBE. He's, uh, we adopted him into Hackney from Wolverhampton. And he's part of a, a scheme that gives money uh, to projects uh, like this, uh, Bailey. So um, Patrick Vernon, OBE, welcome to Hashtag No Joke. Hi guys. Good Hi morning. guys, Good I'm, still morning, for, Patrick. I'm still waiting for my shirts. I'm about to improvise and get a real t-shirt. But anyway, no, cool. no, I think I think we're doing well. To, I think the t-shirts are firing today. I mean, as I say, it's, it's anniversaries, isn't it? Look, so yes, yeah, so it yeah. is anniversary. Absolutely, absolutely. Tuesday absolutely. is one year, and and it's it it's going to be everywhere. I think everybody. It, it's I call it the, the conscious. Um, Donna, um, I'm going to come to you in a minute, but, but, but let me just first introduce Patrick and say to Patrick, welcome. I'm guessing that you've probably seen some of the stuff that we're trying to do. One sure. year on, the death of George Floyd, has anything changed? That is a question that everyone's been talking about. I mean, I've been approached by various media outlets asking the same question, questions in the community. So, I mean, obviously you have to see what's happened in America. It's fundamental what's happened in America the conviction of that racist police officer and the trial of the other four police officers are now happening. I mean, even George, Bi George Biden's inviting the whole family to, to the White House just to have a conversation with them, you know. So, and there's plans to reform the police uh, in Minneapolis. There's lots of things happening in America. The question we need to ask ourselves, what's happened here in the UK? Yeah. And obviously with the murder of George Floyd, I mean, we've had deaths in custody in Britain for, for centuries, donkey's years. I mean, the but very God, first... Well, let me just stop you. This isn't just about the police, is it? It's about... It's, no, it's beyond it's that. It's beyond it's, that. It's, it's about opportunity. Take a, take a look at this, Patrick, and um, sure. everybody else. Um, here, uh, uh, God bless you, Steph, and thanks very much to Anita as well. Here, we just put together a minute or so, um, taking in the one year uh, of the death, uh, the killing that maybe changed the world. George Floyd's story has been the story of black folks because ever since 401 years ago, the reason we could never be who we wanted and dreamed to be in is you kept your knee on our neck. Have either of you watched?
watch the video of George Floyd. It's actually worrying how people can be treated like that, I think. It was a really good wake-up call, I saw. The trauma of seeing that for so many people, especially like black people, like it needed to have been seen, it needs to have been circulated, but it's just so traumatic. I just didn't watch the whole thing. When we say we're tired, it's not just the physical tired of being out here and processing, just internally and emotionally, I'm tired. You're not putting one person's life over another person's life. You're just explaining that black people have been systematically oppressed for hundreds and hundreds of years, and it continues, and it's incredibly pervasive and insidious, and we're addressing that issue. Do you believe white privilege exists? Yes, 100%. I think white privilege is the ability to be able to ignore something. I have a question. So, like, they want us to be peaceful, right? They want us to do peaceful writing, which is, okay, cool. Do you think standing there with that, or standing there like that, or standing there with that, makes somebody want to act peaceful? The reason why we're marching all over the world is we were like George. We couldn't breathe, not because there was something wrong with our lungs, but you wouldn't take your knee off our neck. Mm. Yeah, I mean, thanks again to Steph for putting that together and Anita yeah. for going out and filming it originally. You know, it's, yeah. it's great to work with young mm. people because it, it brings it home. And I mean, it, it is in a moment. That, that end bit is right, isn't it, Patrick? That actually it's, it should be the beginning for, for everyone. It, it should be. But if you look at the annals of history, every 10 to 20 years, we have a, a George Floyd moment, yeah? The last time we had a moment like this was the murder of Stephen Lawrence. Prior to that, you have to go to the murders that, that what happened in the 80s, the, the uprisings, the 60s with the murder of Kelson Cochran, uh, and it goes on, on, on. So we have these windows of opportunity. And the question that we ask ourselves, will it make a difference? Will it change? I mean, what's happened in the UK over the last 12 months is... Um, we've had more conversations on race f for a long time. It's the first time ever that a lot of white people uh, actually start believing us that when we talk about we've been uh, traumatised, microaggressions and racism, people now start to believe us. We've been saying this for decades. That's the first thing. The second thing is we've got a national debate now on the issues of what is heritage in Britain. What is the nationality of Britain? If you remember at the height of um, in last summer, over, remember, two, over 2 million people up and down the country, black and white and brown, went on the streets during the height of lockdown um, to support Black Lives Matter. And the high point of that, obviously, was the removal of Colson Statue in Bristol. And then what led to that was a national debate on what is heritage, the legacy of empire, the legacy of enslavement. That's what's been happening. But sadly, the governments now have developed a, a, a rearguard reaction. We're now, was, we are now in, in the middle of what is called a cultural war, where the status quo want to keep the history of Britain, rural Britannia, how Britain was fantastic, how Britain saved us from ourselves, as opposed to looking at the, the real history of Britain, of, of rape, pillage, plunder, structural racism, and the legacy of that wealth that is that right. makes Britain great today. Yeah. Right. Patrick, I'm only going to interrupt you because we've got lot, lots to fit in and there's a Windrush story of Mark's waiting, sure. Eric's waiting. Right. But I suppose, DMT, my, my question is really, what, what, what does Black Lives Matter mean to you? Well, Black Lives have always mattered. Yeah, but it's so a it's statement. A it's, it's become a movement, hasn't it? It's become a movement, but I think even the fact that there is, I mean, I think, all right, so there's younger people, majoritatively, that are out there on the, under this BLM uh, banner, and I think that is good. Uh, young people of all sections of, of society that are out there, I think that's brilliant. But black lives have always mattered, and I, I didn't know that we had to say that. I think we had to show that. And but I, but I, think, way... I, think, I think Common is right. Black lives matter, but do they matter to us? I think it's, 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 it's it... an opportunity for everybody to take a look, isn't it? Well, this is it. I mean, you know, I want to have talks in the community. We talk about black lives. We, we, we're brilliant as a community. We, we look externally. So we talk about how Asians treat us, how white people treat us. But we don't talk about how we treat each other. So if black lives matter, do they matter to black people? Do they yeah. matter to the way that we treat oh, ourselves? But, but and, and I, think, I think that's what Patrick's saying in a way, and that's how I read it, that, that here is an opportunity 
for I mean, in a way, this is this 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 thing here, whatever we're doing, whatever you choose to call it, comes out of that, doesn't it? It comes out of a guy dying and us going, look, we have to start talking to each other about each other in a way that's inclusive, but in a way that's unapologetic, uh, Leah, about us. Curtis, let me ask you then, um, in terms of looking at that, it's important not to put his death in that video for me, because this is about moving on. There were lots of young people out there have you had any difficult conversation with anybody on the basis of what happened to george floyd never uh it's always a difficult conversation because of the horrific nature of the murder you know and being being able to see it but in regards of having those conversations with people it's ongoing and as donna just said it is about us looking internally and when something like that happens which it does on a regular basis within our community and we've all become a little desensitized mm -hmm. to when somebody happens to a young guy down the street we get kind but of but this one you could see it curtis we could you see could it, it was see there for us life coming out but of we this still have to be aware that if it's um your your brother's um son or your your, your child's nephew it has to be acknowledged we have to rally as a community as a people we have to be there for each other because our trauma, as um, Patrick was saying, is centuries old. And the only thing about Black Lives Matter, it allowed us to express ourselves to each other, express the pain, express that. I've been talking about institutionalized racism for decades, and finally people are acknowledging it exists. You know how frustrating it is to go decades talking and talking and nobody listening and feeling like, oh, you remember that? You've got a chip on your shoulder. I hope that statement has been um, buried in the archives of, uh, of history. You've got a chip on the shoulder. It was only banter. Can't you no. take a joke? That no, kind no. of language, yeah. every time you got upset and got deep into your feelings, it was dismissed as you're too sensitive. And what this year has achieved is that we are all Able. And we've seen it with so many people having a moment to just say, this is how I've been feeling. And people are willing to listen. And we have to keep listening to each other, keep supporting each other, regardless of skin color. Let's support each other through all of this trauma. Because I'm still traumatized by the death of George Floyd. And I'm traumatized by every young blood that is killed on the streets of England. Yeah, and, and, and that's what we're coming to, really. Uh, before we come to that um, number, by the way, all lives matter, Curtis. That's that's the rebuttal to That's when thing. I walk away. That, when you that, throw that, that, that back that, at me, that's, that's, that's when I walk comes. away from that person, when they utter those words. Yeah. And I, I, I'm yeah. hearing I black people say that bull. And it just infuriates me because you're, you're choosing to miss the point. When you utter that yeah. line, you're choosing yeah, miss the point. There's, not, there's no point in having a, a conversation with you. I agree with you. I will with you with that. Uh, that, that, that because because we, we, we know that. Um, boss Lady, um, can you just give us an indication as to what's coming in before we get um, the, the doctor run? Yeah, well, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, there are varying um, views. Alison Yes says, things have changed. Some UK employers are now willing to make things right for black employers. Um, Sorry. Dustin says nothing has changed. We must make our own change and stop waiting for others to help. Ye says the Times Rich List comes out today. Very few blacks on the list. We globally are the biggest boycott of black businesses. Um, Kim says well, she doesn't think we'll see change even in her children's lives. And Bev, um, this is one we were talking about earlier, worrying now is the amount of young black boys being abducted or going missing for very sinister reason and nothing is being done. Um, publicly, another view about nothing changing. And Kim says, look at how the Windrush people are being treated and are still um, being treated. And that's an interesting one, what Donna was saying and Kim about black businesses. We need to go out and support our businesses even more. Starts from us to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep your comments coming in. Um, big up to ACLT. See you in 20.
19th and 20th um we'll get the link yes. and we'll get we'll get the link up there so that you can know how you can be part of this coming together to help other people because they're people who really really do need um help and support all right so it's going to be a bit like that today and 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 okay to, to the to the business of children being abducted curtis remind me at the end of the show to address that uh, oh, because well. I've, I've had a reporter on it all week and 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 i've literally just got a message back from her from the police and also so remind me uh, to come to that before the end of the show please curtis because that's doing the rounds and, and we have to address that okay so Look, we've got Patrick. Welcome, Patrick. It's, it's a mm. pleasure to have you. I promise we'll talk about Windrush. And thank you for, 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 for all the work that you've done campaigning in the community. Uh, DMT and Curtis. So uh, uh, we're supposed to have had this next gentleman on about three weeks ago. Then it became too crowded at the end. We took the week off because it was the mayoral elections and I had to go and work at the big house and then when i wanted him on last week on the 16th he said to me eddie i think you need to wait now in my research i worked out that 18th was the anniversary i was like what come on don't make me wait it's great to have it on last week because if we did that eddie wait and then he said it in a way and if you know this brother when he says it like that he just shut up he just, he just shut he just shut up and you just wait so that's that's what i did um and then we found out so, uh, head of uh, Dr. Mark Prince OBE, take a look at this video. My name is Kyan Prince, and I am a professional footballer, or at least I would have been, had I not been killed when I was 15. There's two stories I want to tell you about my son, Kyan. The first one is about how he lost his life to a young person carrying a knife. But I want to tell you the other story, the more powerful one, about the man he was destined to become. Everyone used to talk about Kyan, how much of a wonderful talent he was, and he was always destined to play at the top. Were he alive today, Kyan's hard work, positivity and his talent would have seen him become one of the stars of the game. What a goal by Kyan Now I understand not everyone's got what it takes to become a pro baller, but everyone's got something that they're good at. So stand tall, stand strong, and let that be your story. Your only story. See the man Kyan was destined to become. Find him in FIFA as the face of JD in match attacks and on the team sheet at QPR. Wow. Oh. Um, welcome to Hashtag No Joke, Dr. Mark Prince, OBE. Greetings, T. King. Yes, my brother, Eddie. Much love to you, man. So much. So grateful to be on your platform, brother. Really, um, um, just tears, bro. <laughs> hmm. but, You're out of well. You, you got me going, brother. Cheers, I, I, just check, you watch that, you know. <laughs> The worst thing any one of us can imagine, brother man, is is something happening to our child. I, I, I don't know. How does it make you feel watching that? Goosebumps came up first. I had about 30 different thoughts run through my mind. It's incredible. And then, then the tears started welling up in my eyes and started to run down my face. So... I'm so yeah, Mark, amazing. I just want to say, even, years. yeah. Go on, go on, bro. Go just on, the bro. language of that video and, and, and that thing about looking forward, the future. Yeah. What that would have been. That rhetoric, I've never thought of it like that. It's a powerful way to, to do this, man. I'm so, so impressed. Look into Thank the you. future of these young people. Yeah. What your Thank future you. is going to be. 
absolutely that's, brilliant. Absolutely, it's been my, absolutely. It's been my message, Curtis. It's yeah. been my message, bro. I have not, even though there's been tears when I talk to the youth. There's there's so many times where I've got an audience of hundreds of youths and there's bare crying, but the focus has always been that, and through their tears they are inspired. Young girls talking, saying this needs to be in every school. Uh, the young boys, I've had, it's more difficult for boys to show their emotion, but you can see their dumbfound is still quiet. But I have had young men crying in my arms, just talking about how much they've been involved in this lifestyle and they do not want to be involved anymore. This is it. After they've met me and we've had an interaction and engaged together, that's it for them. So there's so much power in looking forward, um, giving them hope and using my life as well as Kyan's because they need to know that somebody's done this. Like I've been homeless at 15, Kurt. It's like I've been through it, bro. And to get to number one in the world, I've had to get through drugs, uh, alcohol, um, just getting focus, belief, confidence in myself. I've had to do this journey, so I'm already equipped. I've got a degree, a master's in life experience when it comes to change, when it comes to being positive, when it comes to speaking the word. You know, like I live by the principles of God's word. So I prove that these words are not just some book written by any guy. This is God's word to his human beings teaching us how to live with each other in love, with respect, you know, with value, bringing value to our communities in the way that we live our lives. So our communities are a better places, result in the world being a better place. You know, we can make this change. You know, people should not be negative. People should focus on what they can do to add value and share that message with everyone. It's the way we live, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. And that, that, that story there is about where I have boys, so that, that materialism, you know, what you mm. as a parent, sometimes you're fighting that mentality that you've got to have everything, yeah, the latest. Yeah. I've got to have, I've got to have, I've got to have. And when, like, a lot of us are coming from a place where we really didn't have much, even I know in my years, I used to build bikes. You know, if you want yes. a bike, you'd have to walk street and see PCS or PCS mm. and build some kind of contraption. I was That's how we got our bikes. To it's totally, totally alien to them, you mm. know? And, and it's about that mentality, because I know the material things is what older heads like ourselves are competing with a lot of the time. We're, we're, we're trying to teach them about that values, as you're saying, of, of human do, beings, rather than what? judging me on what I'm wearing and what the latest thing yes, is. You yes, know? yes, yes. Character building. Yeah. That's why I use this whole campaign. And you hear me time and time again talking about Kyan's character. Character. The yeah. value that Kyan um, brought to his peers, his community, with his character, his area, his school. His, well, you know, then let's talk about that. Let's life. talk about that, Mark. Let's talk about that. Tell oh, me. Man. Well, I know. I, I apologize. I apologize. Yeah. Right? No, I apologize. Man, you don't, not to apologize. Yeah, but I do bro. because I, I know that I'm I'm going to that place. I know the boss lady is DMT Patrick, uh, and it's not easy for us to take mm. you to a place that we know is uh, a, not a nice place, right? Yeah, I made and a sacrifice. Tell, tell, tell yeah. me, tell me what kind of you he was that you that died 15 years ago on Tuesday, aged 15. I'm blown away by this you and he's mine. He, you know, he 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 was he was gifted to me for me to bring up and teach him how to live as a human being and he's blown my mind. Um his insight for me was incredible to be able to be at 15 to be able to understand the sacrifices that you have to make and what it took for me to not allow depression to get to me when I was at the top of the food chain, fight for the world title, number one in the world, and then had an injury that took my career out. 
he looked at me and said, I am proud of you, dad. I haven't seen you break down, get messed up, you know, allow this to change you and just stay depressed. You've picked yourself up. You're smiling like, I was like, whoa, this brother. So for me, when people ask me, how do you think Kyan would feel? He already told me how he felt. So I already know. I'm just continuing doing what I was doing when he was alive and I was being with him, with me and Tracy, bringing him up. I'm just continuing being his dad. Because he's not here with me, don't mean I stop being his dad. I just have to be in his, I have to be his dad in a different way because he's not here. I have to speak about him. I have to utilize his gifts about, you know, reaching for his potential, um, um, not joining and trying to follow others. He was his own man. You know, he done what he wanted. He didn't follow, oh, I got to dress like this and be like that. He put on his pink rucksack because <laughs> his mum told him that your dad liked pink and used to wear pink cardigans when he was young. And Kyan was like, yeah, boom. That was his colour now. He was on it. Pink. <laughs> and, he, you know, no matter who laughed or whatever they said, he actually made that a trend. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he made that look good. Um, if somebody... He, he noticed that if somebody was kind of like not inclusive, left out, he would he would make an effort to bring them in. Like he saw this guy, I forgot the guy's name, he just come up to me on the street and told me about uh, Kyan when he first went to the school. He didn't know anyone. He just come from, after he was a refugee at the school. And um, he said, Kyan just come up to him and said, you know, what are you doing standing on your own? And the guy said, I don't know anyone. I just, you know, started school here and kind of introduced to everyone. He said, now you know everyone. Everything's cool. Join the football game. And he said, my life changed from there at school. Yeah. And he enjoyed a beautiful school experience. His mum doted on him because he was a peaceful guy as well. Kyan would you'd often see him in his slippers and his dressing gown, and he was happy at home in that. And when he'd go out, he'd be, he'd be on the football. He... He excelled in practicing. You know, I was told recently that by a footballer who's now like Sam Cox, who's now playing for a, a team. I can't even remember. Sorry, Sam. He's playing for, he's a professional footballer now. He said, when Kyan began, he weren't even that good. He said it was so raw. He said you could laugh at him. He weren't that good. He said, but in one year of working hard at his game, he changed. He worked hard. He worked hard. And these young people, they, they seem to want it so bad, they're trying to find a shortcut. They think it's going to come overnight. They actually think the goal is the things. The goal yeah. is the money. But the goal um, and how you develop is through the process. The goal isn't the money. It's what value you bring to whatever you're doing. And to get that value, you have to focus on something. You have to practice that thing. And while you're going through that, that uh, goal that you've set, you develop. The reason why I know this, Eddie, is because when I was a, a you on the street, licking a crack pipe, sniffing coke, bunning weed, the whole madness, now it sounds crazy as I talk about it now, doing robberies, doing madness. Why? Because the streets told me that was the way that I could make it. And I never questioned that until I began to question myself and have a conversation with myself, say, hold on a minute, you ain't even tried. You ain't even tried. You've bought all the excuses on the streets. Oh, the system, the racist, they're all against us. We're not going to have this. We can't have this. We're black. We're... But you ain't even tried yet. To, to be able to say, I failed and I'm getting up, I'm going to try again. I didn't go through that process. All I did was bought the lies, as my good friend Robin Travis, his book puts it, prisoner to the street. I didn't even try. I was a prisoner to the street mindset. It was a poverty mindset. And to change that, to have a wealth mindset, I needed to change the way I was thinking and disown the thinking of, of what many of my peers in my community had that thought about themselves. It lacked of self-belief. And I changed that by having one conversation with myself, Eddie. And when I finished that conversation, I didn't like me. And then I decided, well, I'm going to do something about me then. It weren't about everything outside of me. 
I had the power to control the destiny of my own life. So I've had to take this message and get it out there. And when these youths hear this message, you know, when I, I'm talking about prisoners, man in jail, I'm telling man in jail, bruv, here, let me break it down. You went and put someone in a wheelchair because he come from a different postcode. Oh, okay. And you're telling me that you hate the police. Well, you're doing worse than the police because you're not only asking man where they're from, you know, what, what ends you from, but you're going to inflict damage on them after you've done that. At least the police will try and do something booky and arrest you and put you in jail. You come out with your life most of the time, hopefully. But you, man, everyone's frightened when they see a bunch of youths on the road about what they're going to do. So, so it's about changing that mindset and you have to let them see the damage being done because of the ownership of that way of thinking. And then you have to invite them into this new way of thinking that gives them their heart's desire because they're not really all out evil. 99% of these guys are just problem. They have issues, problems, just like I did when I was growing up. But there's no, no guidance. There's no role models to show them like, here's the score. This is what you do. And I'm not saying they're not out there, but they're not making an impact with them. They're not engaging with them. That's why, bro, this campaign is so powerful, Eddie, because it speaks globally to the youths that I can't reach. And then it allows youths to reach out to me, reach out to Kyan Prince Foundation so we can support and help them. And it speaks to them to say, if a little black youth that's not even alive now can get onto FIFA because of his character and using his talent. Now, what can I do with my life? And I'm able-bodied and I'm here. Why do I need to ruin my community by having this negative mindset? We've got to take the knives out of the mind. So if, I mean, literally, we could, we could do the whole hour with you, mm, just yeah. let, let you talk. But, 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 but it, it, first of all, what has the reaction been? And B, what's the message that you've got? From, if we're honest, mostly parents and grandparents listening today. We've got to take back our streets. We've got to take back control of our families. I always take responsibility. I think that our generation has got a lot to answer for, for how the next generation is. Because uh, if, we're, if we're saying that our parents brought us up and this is how we turned up, well, we need to pass on some of those things to our, our children. But a lot of the things we didn't like, we decided to eliminate them but we didn't put anything in place that we learned to substitute for some of the things that we didn't like growing up, like getting beaten at the drop of a hat, um, having to go to church every week. And we felt that we were forced. But what I done is I taught my youths about God sitting down in my yard, because if everything designed has a designer, then we are designed and we have a great designer. So there's no point creating an education system that tries to ignore that and block us out because there's consequences to that. And the consequences to that is you lack the value of human life when you don't know the great creator that you come from and you're built in his image, which is that you can have a thought and you can materialize that thought and see it created in reality. That's the power that we have as human beings because our father in heaven is so powerful. He made a creation that resembles his power. We're made in his image. Now, instead of going out there and living a fruitful life, a life that will share the government of love that, that God runs his kingdom by, we want to come down here and express evil and express evil thoughts and express those things and hurt and damage others. Because what's what I've realized is hurting people hurt people. So if hurting people hurt people, shouldn't we be putting more effort into healing hurting people that will result in better communities, better families? Well, I think we're always going to have this yeah, problem, isn't it? I think, mm -hmm. I think the central point of listening to you and Curtis today is that we have to, you know, whilst we do acknowledge that things have happened and George Floyd was certainly killed uh, by somebody, an officer of the state, it's about what we can do ourselves. You've helped us with that. You've helped us. I, I, I think that what you're doing is amazing. That pain to face that like you do 
just, just, have you ever two quick questions because I've always wanted yeah. to ask you. Have you ever met yeah. the, the child that killed your boy? Uh, no, I've made my efforts. I was seeing Cat Twenty Two, the restorative justice arm, for nearly a year. They were going to see Hanad. They were coming to see me. The agreement was made. He agreed. I agreed. The talks were being done. It was very difficult process to go to these meetings. So I went through this process and eventually we was like a week away. The plug got pulled by powers that be and it didn't happen. Um, I'm hoping now with the way that God has created this platform for me to be able to, to have a look, some more power and authority that the media will support the backing. It will be included in a documentary um, that I'm going to, I'm working on currently. And, um, and people will see the results of, of me going to, to visit Hanad. Right. And, and, and finally, and this is the last one, because, because every time I ask a question, I want to ask more, but, yeah. Have you had, and are you still having? I, I've watched you for years, and I, yeah. I, I don't know that apart from Dory Lawrence, I've seen in a human being the finny, the physical manifestation of pain in the way that I see every time I look at you, every time I hear you speak, I see pain. Have you, and are you getting help? Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, can, can I add something, Eddie? Is that, is, um... I asked the great counsellor, the greatest counsellor in the universe to counsel me because I realised mm -mm -mm, no one don't know my relationship with my children, how I feel about my children. They were everything to me, everything. You can't take one of my crew. You can't take one of my gang that God has created and given to me. That 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 would that messed. I I turned insane, bruv. I lost it. Hmm. So you're always gonna see that when you see me. But but how I used to look compared to how I look now is night and day, night and day. But what's important is the power that you carry and the impact that you have. Way more important than any pain that you'll see in my eyes. It's how I use the pain, and I use that pain for purpose. Uh, Prince, can I, can I add something? Um, yeah, please. Res res respect to you, man. Um, yeah, you're, you, like, you, like many other parents and guardians and aunts and uncles who have lost a loved one in such a tragic way, have, it's a kind of psychological expression that's used, post-traumatic growth. You yeah. have grown out of the out of the loss of your son into something powerful. And if, if you've seen all the messages on this chat, everyone's just praising you big time. But you know, one of the big issues in the community is yeah. we, don't, we don't know how to grieve. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the pandemic, yeah. we've lost tens of thousands of black people up and down the country because of COVID. We've lost yeah. thousands around deaths in custody uh, yeah. and different circumstances. And we don't really have these conversations about how we deal with loss, yeah. how we deal with grief yeah. and I think yes doing your work about aspirations for young people is important yeah. but yes. a conversation with the elders yes. about dealing with grief is just as powerful mm. and maybe powerful. I mean I've, 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 had, I've had chats with um, Stuart Lawrence just, um, and he's talked he goes in the schools talking about how he deals with grief Brilliant. And there's, and I think it's just bring. I mean, Marcia Rigg, who lost her brother, Sean Rigg, mm -hmm. she talks about how to deal with grief. Mm -hmm. And Neville Lawrence and Lee Lawrence, who lost mm -hmm. his mother, uh, Terry Gross, we need to have a conversation about how we deal with that. And I think it should be Beautiful. part of that process. Yeah, I mean, Beautiful. Def, 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 definitely. Listen, Mark, um, thank you for coming on, right? Oh, thank um, you, man. It's the constraints we, we, of time. Yeah. We, we, should have, we should have had this for, we should have had, because like, we need more of this. Eddie, like you, seriously, bro, you're a trailblazer. Um, and I've respected you for a long time now. And, and Curtis as well. And people that have just, as, as really just given the foundation for, for us coming up to let us see that there's hope that we can also get in these positions and be in the front in entertainment and various positions. And what you're doing, Eddie, it's fantastic staying on radio. Um, there's so much platforms for us for young people to look up to. But 
it's almost like the doors keep being shut um, to prevent us. But I think now there's change. There's I, I change that. coming. Yeah. There's change yeah. coming. And yeah. it's, yeah. About the, it's about us getting to the decision-making table. And that's why I feel that that's, that's my role. I need to get in a position where young people can see that our roles just ain't on the road, mate. And that's a waste of your life. And I'll, I've got my own production company now. You know, I'm putting myself in a position where young black boys can see that even from the worst trauma you go through, you can even use that rise yourself up and be an example and an inspiration to those behind you. You are that. And um, uh, Patrick Patrick alluded to comments that were coming in. We might as well do it in front of you. Um, boss yeah, lady, bro. what types of comments are coming in from Mark? Well, firstly, I must say, hello, Prince. Enough respect yes, to well you. Done. I'm just, I'm just trying to control it here. I could listen to you speak all day yeah. with a packet yeah, of tissues, cool. but I could definitely, lots and lots of respect coming in. Michelle saying, utmost respect and continued strength to Dr. Mark Prince. Pauline yeah. says, Mark's son, Prince, still lives on. Pauline yeah. Gale sending big hubs to you, Mark. You are a tr true warrior and an inspiration. Arlene says, a life lost is a future lost. Uh, Veronica yes. Williams says, thanks for being an inspiration to our young people and leaving them with hope. Yeah. Yvonne Shaw says, congratulations, Mark Prince, with all that you have done to honour your son, Cayenne. Uh, Patricia Graham says, Mark Prince, you are a king. Bless oh. up. Event, yes, Yvonne says, listening to you, I can only imagine what a fantastic son Kyan was. Mm -hmm. And Lorraine True. says, I could listen to you all day. You've hit the nail on the head about changing mindsets. And also, just a question that was asked. Um, yeah. Somebody, a lot of people want to know how they can support you. Do you have a GoFundMe page, yeah. a website, yeah, or a link that they yeah. can have yeah, to support? There's the a, go, there's a GoFundMe page. There's a GoFundMe page. There's a text amount to, we'd really like to send everyone to a GoFundMe page because now we believe that it's about the center. Like you can't be talking about these things and you don't have anywhere to demonstrate your model. So we've been doing this for years, reached over 86,000 children up to date. And we want to be able to demonstrate our model where the young people see us, hear about us and say, this here's the biggest question. Prince, where can we go, bruv? Where can we get some more of this? Where can I come to where you can train me? Where can I come and I can get more workshops? You know, we want to heal people that are suffering with PTSD, you know, because so many youths have seen people getting stabbed, killed. We don't realise how hard it is for the young people now. It's different from when we were growing up, Kurt. It's different. <clears throat> so we just want to heal them holistically. So I would love people to follow, subscribe to Dr. Mark Prince, OBE. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Because we want to continue inspiring people. I am starting the Dr. Prince show where I think the power of our journeys, every one of us on this platform has a powerful journey that we've lived, lessons that we've learned that we need to be passing on to others. So I just created a platform where I could talk to many different people and, and, and in the hope that others will learn from their life's journeys. So follow me on Dr. Mark Prince. Obviously, everyone follow the Kyan Prince Foundation. Check out our website. If you go on to uh, www.thekpf.com, you'll see the GoFundMe page on the website. Okay, guys? So go on to thekpf.com, and you'll see our um, charity website, and you'll see the GoFundMe page set up on the website. And then, guys, I really appreciate your support your help um and it's just fantastic being with eddie once again i always have the best time with eddie every time i come on with him so thank I would, you everyone else i, would, I wouldn't discuss it's pretty it's pretty intense and it has been again listen yeah. um we got the numbers so let's let's keep uh, in touch let's keep supporting each other let's be yeah, um, exactly what we're telling everybody else to be let's yeah, be examples follow me mark prince obe on on social media you yeah, guys yeah. God no, bless you, bub. Look after yourself. Media. Have God a great day. Man. I give your thank queen, you tell your queen thank you for getting you up and sh shaving <laughs> your forehead so that you could at least talk to me and look like a human being. What do I look <laughs> better now? Do I look look better better now than this morning, bro, you looked a mess. I was like, what's going on? Was he in a fight last night? <laughs> Take it easy, bro. God bless, bro. Easy, thank you, bro. Thank Love you, you man. Take right, care, bro. guys. Bye. Bye. Ah, boy. Bye. DMT. 
Um, yeah. That wasn't easy, was it? No, it wasn't easy, but he spoke bare life into the community. He spoke, like anybody that didn't hear that needed to hear that. Life was spoken. Everything he said. The only thing, the and I would never speak against him. Yeah, but the, I would never speak against him, right? Because everybody's got to find their way. But the only thing that I wanted to talk about was, you see, at the minute, there is a, a dispute going on that we can't mention, which is based on, on religion. So when I think it's about being a good person, I think it's about being a decent human being. And I don't think you necessarily have to be attached to a religion to believe. I understand his foundation and many of, I think all of our foundations would be the same. I did take that point though, where you didn't like going to Sunday school, there probably was a life lesson in that because not everything that you do, you can like, or not everything mm. you like, you can do. Uh, let me speak We've got a special guest coming on in a minute. It's one of those shows, and I can see the time already. Uh, Patrick, let's speak to that thing. I mean, you you were part of Ubele, right? And uh, our deal with Ubele, and it's not with you, because I wanted you on separately, is that we would talk about grief. It's so important. There's a kind of, that, almost an expectation that physically, definitely black women can take more pain, that the, the mental trauma, we look at people dying, and it doesn't mean anything. Mm. But it does mean something. It's real, isn't it, Pat? No, it's absolutely real. I mean, it goes back to the whole stuff around Black Lives Matter. We've been dehumanised. I mean, if you watch any classic sci-fi movie, uh, you name it, uh, it's always about the black experience, isn't it? I mean, I've been watching uh, The Expanse on um, on um, Amazon, which I think is brilliant. Um, but the problem is actually we've been we've been conditioned dehumanised that we and white people have conditions to, to be dehumanised that we don't show emotions, and we do show emotions. We're seen as aggressive. Well, and, all, and all the negative stuff that we know about. I've only, you know, we spent a whole hours talking about microaggressions, but the problem is actually we've been programmed to not not to be human. Yeah, there's a concept uh, in America that's been developed over the last thirty years called Afro pessimism, which means that from the time of enslavement, we've been made to feel subhuman. We've been always been subhuman compared to other races in, around the world, irrespective, and and uh, and therefore we're not allowed to be who we are. And, and, and that means when it comes to day-to-day -day stuff that we have to deal with in life, in society, uh, and we're trying to find a way to articulate ourselves, and you articulate yourself in a different way, you, you, you are not back into your box. Yeah. And that's why I think the whole stuff from Black Lives Matter is relevant. It's the first time, I think, in Britain we've been given the permission to breathe and to say, you know what? I want to talk about the everyday racism experiences, the discrimination I have, and but part of that process now is how do you then move from that, basically, you know, and and that's the challenge when it comes to grief. I mean, again, I've mentioned briefly about COVID. I've been working close with Yubelli on COVID uh, around the response and the community response. There've been tens of thousands of deaths of the black community connected with COVID nineteen over the last fifteen months. And you know, I've so I've launched some various initiatives around more counselling support services and memorializations of that, basically. But the key issue is that when it comes to our grief, and what you've just heard, what's happened with Prince and his son, and other, there's been there's tens of thousands of stories around the country. Well, we're, we're, not the, we get, we're not given. We're, we're not being given the permission, and we need no, to find out. I, I, I mean, I think the thing about those BLM uh, matters is that there were so many young people, and they weren't always black. And when it's like that, uh, it's about it's a bit like having times up. You can't just do it with women. The guys need to buy into it, and it's a bit like racism. You can't just do it with black people. White people need to buy into it. And what they saw with that video was, uh, as I say, what people have been saying for years, and that did it. Look. I've got a special guest coming on the show. And, and there is a through thread, I think, um, today in terms of listening to Mark. And Mark talked a lot about material stuff. Uh, this is the first black guy to do a show like this in the country. You may well have seen it. Um, let's just give you a little peek of the type of stuff he uh, has been dealing with. Times small businesses are struggling more than ever. We could be bankrupt in, within a month. One man is here to help. So I'm ready to write you a check today. But to invest his own cash, he'll need to put them through their paces. The question is why you think that things are going so great. Will they be able to impress? Eric has put in £120,000. And turn their businesses around to secure a life-changing investment. It changes people's lives, it changes communities' lives. Getting young people in, train them up. The business is really going places. That's what I'd like to see. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I want to see. 
Eric Collins, greetings and welcome to Hashtag No Joke. Thanks for coming in, sir. Thanks for coming on, sir. Thanks for having me, Eddie. It's good, and I enjoyed the last segment. Well, yeah, I mean, we might talk a little bit to that in terms of America, but you, you can probably see the time, and it's just... You know, I've been challenged to make this show an hour, but it's impossible. I just can't do it. I failed. I let myself and my family down. Uh, uh, but that's what DMT and Curtis have become used to. You, you're the first black guy that I've ever seen doing a show specifically about money. Is that is that true? I, I've never seen it. Is that right? Can I say that? I think there have been a number of people who are black here in the UK who've had some sort of intersection with shows. So here's many. When he did the he did early seasons of Dragons Den, you have Tim Campbell who was the first winner on The Apprentice. So you have some people who are like that. But in terms of headlining a show that is an investment show that is speaking specifically to a generalist audience and is talking about we are the individuals who should be giving you advice as to where to put your money and how to make great amounts of money. I think in the United States here uh, and here, I'm the first person who's actually doing that. So it has been. Uh, an interesting privilege to be a pioneer in that respect. Yeah, and 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 lovely to watch. And a big fan of Tim's, and hopefully we'll get Tim Campbell on this show uh, very very soon. I watched uh, certainly the first one when I got home after I interviewed on the radio, and mm. I found that the emotional attachment that most of us have with money, you didn't have. Is no. th does that make sense to you? Absolutely. I. I Money is a means to an end. Capital is something to get from one place to another. And in terms of, even for the conversation we were having before, the, the segment before, the question of how do you actually get empowerment? How do you decrease white supremacy? How do you decrease uh, you know, the violence of police against citizens? All of those things and those messages getting out, if you want to do it um, through media, the question is, do we actually own the resources in order to be able to put our agendas forward all the time without having to go hat in hand to other people and beg them to believe in what we believe in and say, you support me because it's important to me and you put your resources behind it. If that's what we're still relying on in 2021, we are in a bad situation. So my conversation is constantly that if you think about what are the levers that you need to pull in order to make systemic change, to get rid of systemic racism, systemic misogyny, to undermine white supremacy, it is having the capital to be able to do the things you wish to do and to make sure you're backing the initiatives that you think are important. You said the So you're, you're doing what the children do, but you're doing it in a different way. They're making, in my understanding, uh, and you guys will tell me if I'm wrong, a direct link between money and power. That's what they're doing. And they're saying, however I get this money, it, 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 it equates to power or respect from my peers. What is missing, and one of the things I think Mark was talking about, certainly, and Patrick, is the work, quite obviously, that you might need to put in in order to make that money worthwhile. If you work for 500 pan, it's very mm -hmm. different so if you steal it, earn it through a different means, you're really careful about where that 500 pound goes because you worked for your money. Tell, tell me about the kind of way that the work ethic. The work ethic involved in money making? Well, I think yeah. that not all, not all money is created equal. Money that is made from ill-gotten ill -gotten gains is not money that you can then easily put into the system to make change happen. The whole purpose of what I do in life and what most people who work with me and sort of invest with me is they want there to be permanent change in a better world. So how the money comes about and what we use it for is a deliberate act. It is a deliberate act of a strength, power, and sort of making sure that, again, our messages are being put forward and the narratives that we have. So the thing that I think is very important for your audience and for all of us who are speaking about this is that you know, the first thing that we have to do with money is that we actually have to be in a position where we can put some money aside so we can do other things, so that we're just not living hand to mouth. Mm. But, and that's sort of the first second. I so don't maybe, earn enough money to save. <laughs> right. So if you don't, if you're if you're going hand to mouth, then that's going to be one thing. But even if you're going hand to mouth, if you're then using credit cards and establishing debt, and that sort of debt is paid back at very high interest rates, even if you do have a lot of money. The, or you make more money in the following year, the challenge will still be that you won't have enough to actually pay your obligations. So that's one thing that you have to think about. 
But after you get to that point, so let's say we get to that point, the second piece is that you have got to be in a position to then do things that have a little bit of risk. That's buying assets, things like houses are assets. And that's another little step. And then finally, we wanna to get to the point when you have sufficient capital, we need to get to a whole nother mindset. And that is our money needs to be working for us. Putting your money in a house is great. And you know, 20 years from now, you might have doubled the value and that's a very good thing. And during the way, along the way, you can take a second mortgage and use that for other things. But eventually we want to get to the point where people are actually getting huge amounts of return because they are inventing and starting companies like Amazon and investing in them or Tesla, and they're returning huge amounts of money. That capital then can be used to create the Gates Foundation. That's what is being done by Jeff Bezos. That is what's being done by the Walton family that owns. Well, uh, well, well, I think his ex-wife is probably giving away more money than his Bezos. So just, just let me put that out there. Uh, I think he's he's known as somebody who's a philanthropist in that way. I, mm -hmm. I find it fascinating to listen to you, right? Mm -hmm. Because you are talking about it in a way. I mean, make, tell me if I'm wrong, guys, but in a way that we don't normally hear. We normally talk about money in a survival way and mm -hmm. you're talking about it on the front foot which is kind of probably the way we're going to do it now you and i had a little mix up about inherited wealth mm -hmm. tell them tell everyone because i thought that that's the way that people like boris johnson can afford or not 800 pound wallpaper whatever it might be tell me well, what you think if somebody earns money they should do with their money uh, just give it to their children invest it tell me what your thoughts are about inherited wealth Oh, I told, and I think I told you the story about my parents. My parents told me early on, we don't intend to leave you a bunch of money after we die. That's not the point. The point is to invest that money in you along the way. Just like any investment, you start small. So start with your education. The next thing we'll do is we'll help you to buy some real estate. The next thing we'll help you with is to buy a house. That doesn't wait. All those activities don't wait until I'm dead. And that's inherited wealth. It needs to be invested along the way in small increments. Those are the most important things that will create a base. And that base will then be able, you'll able to build on that base as an individual. So that's my true belief. And I think you hear more and more people who say, especially the richest people in the world, and maybe we should follow that as an example. They say, we're not leaving all of our money just to our children because that doesn't necessarily deliver the returns and create the world we want to see. We are going to have an actionable approach to investing, invest in them when they're young, give them the right sort of upbringing and morals, give them the right sort of base that they can then build on themselves and then help them to do all these other sorts of things and make their way in the world. That's what I believe in terms of the question of inherited wealth. The idea that I, you know, you, you give me a lot of money after you die and at which point I buy a house in Mallorca, that's not the point in my opinion. Mm. <laughs> can, can, can I add something? I think what uh, Eric said is really important. And, but interesting thing about your concept of wealth creation, wealth building, and mm -hmm. the point that was, that was made by Prince about what he's trying to do, and lots of people trying to do stuff in the community, mm -hmm. is about, I mean, I see myself as a social entrepreneur. So I have got lots of properties and assets, but the, I do set aside money, and I use that money to invest in the work I do as a campaigner, as an mm -hmm. activist, and supporting a whole range of community initiatives. And one of the big questions in the community is about community assets. How can, you, yes, you can be a successful individual, and you can invest your money into, and you might have your own foundation and diamond, but how can we get more of the people in the community to put their resources together so we can have community buildings and community yeah. resources? Absolutely. I think we've lost that. We've lost that over the last 20, 30 years. Years. There was a time that every, every war depends on local authority buildings. Those buildings have gone, they've been sold off for housing developments. But how can we do it as a community perspective? I mean, we're, we're the, we're how the... can we help Mark build that center that he wants to build for people yeah. to come to? Is there a response? Is there a so? Because Patrick yeah. will speak like that because Patrick, that's Patrick's job, right? But you might not believe as a hedge fund owner, as a capitalist, or whatever you describe yourself as, that there is any social responsibility. You, you make your money, you're making it. Do you believe that there is a social responsibility? The whole, my entire ethos is about making sure that there is, there's capital in communities for the sorts of things we're talking about. The capital that you need, Patrick, to build that building is not going to come from me saving for my nursing job on a day-to-day -day basis, having a little bit of money to donate to you. What's going to make that happen is a virtuous circle where we are building the kinds of institutional institutions 
that are called corporations or companies that actually hire a lot of people. And those people, they hire dozens of people, even hundreds of people, and sometimes tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. Those individuals all have incomes. Those individuals, generally, they're coming from these communities and they have a belief in what will make the community work. Let's let those individuals get much, you know, blow up in terms of their jobs, create big companies. From those, there'll be exits. The kind of exits that I see in the kind of portfolio investments that I do release tens of millions, hundreds of millions, and even billions on an annual basis. That money is real money to be able to underwrite all of these things. The things that we're constantly talking about is what is the source of funding that is going to fund our dreams and the things which are necessary. And if you look at the, the Impact X, which is a venture capital fund looking for huge returns, or if you look at the money maker, you will see the same thing happens. I'm investing in individuals who have businesses in communities and they hire people and those people have aspirations of their own, opportunities are created for them. And eventually what we do is we release capital, which can then be used to pay off your student loans, buy a house, used for philanthropic reasons. But I don't mistake philanthropic donations, which are very instrumental for community building, from what is going to actually be the capital to do that. Am I going to continue going to the BFI and asking the BFI or the Arts Council to fund my project because I think that black lives need to be center in terms of artistic expression? Or do I just do that myself? And do I have the money to just do that myself? And if we're constantly talking about, I need to beg <laughs> for the tax dollars to do that, we're in a very different situation than what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about you need to be able to fund what you want to see because we don't need to ask permission from other people to do what is a necessary work. Uh, in our community. Uh, let, let me challenge you, Eric. How's that? This platform here, you've just seen, mm -hmm. I've talked to a man who's dedicated his life to helping his um, child and his story not be other people's mm -hmm. story. We have a rising number uh, of children killing each other on the streets mm -hmm. of London. It, it, it's not, something's not working. We've talked throughout the show about working together. You Americans are ahead of us because you have something that you want to work to. I'm, I'm happy when you're ready to sit down at any time and, and, and how do we, how do we get no joke to a level where we are supporting Mark Prince, where we're supporting uh, Patrick mm -hmm. Vernon, who's involved in uh, uh, multiple things? How, how do we do it? Uh, I think the one thing is that, that we have to be prepared to listen. And certainly mm -hmm. from listening to you, you speak in a way that we don't speak in this country. We talk about grants, we talk about assistance, and we talk about somebody helping us to do it. Uh, you talk about us doing it for ourselves, and it's really fascinating to listen to you. We've run out of time, but I'm hoping, I've got your email, I'm hoping that I can reach out to you and um, sit down and break bread, as they say, and reason. Is that okay? I would love that. And I would love for people to follow us on Instagram and also to follow us on uh, Twitter because we are Eric D. Collins. That's sort of how to find me because these are the issues we talk about and we give lots of hints. And we also have a website, www.moneymaker.com, which is all about people who want to start businesses. Go there for some free information. Go find out what are the things that are being held behind all these sort of paywalls and the like that you might not have otherwise seen we're making the information available so that people can get to the result that they have the capital to do the work that needs to be done. As a person from That's America, right, brother man. It's, it's an absolute um, pleasure Beautiful. to speak to you and to hear you. Sometimes we need to challenge our own mindset. I think that's happened today with you and Mark. Thank you so much, Eric, for coming. And I'll send you an email. I really appreciate it. I've enjoyed speaking to you on the radio and today. God bless you, my brother. Look after Thank yourself. You. Thanks, everybody. Wow. I feel wealthier already, man. I feel well. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, DMT. Uh, Alfred, yeah. that's beautiful, man. Yeah, what isn't that, isn't about, that? I feel richer. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about, and I feel richer. <laughs> Jeez. And, and you know that because is the, the reality is, you know, he yeah. said about money coming. You know, when we when we talk about our young people trying to create that money in a fast way and doing ill-gotten gains. If you look at the history of every um, big corporation that we kind of, they've all got money from selling slaves, from selling tobacco. These are how all banks were built. You know, the reality so, is once you make that money you know and i look at it as a community level where we all start with that dream of we're going to look back and feed our community 
those people that make it to a point where they've got real money then become the gatekeepers, which I find in the history of us in this little 30, 40 years, um, they become the gatekeepers and they don't look back, a lot of people. They don't look back until the money yeah, starts you, to run you, out. You, you, and then you they might suddenly be, you might be become right. pro black again. You might be right. Have hit a buffer. But, but, but I don't, I don't, you might be right, but I don't like it because it, what you're saying means that I won't try. And I don't no, want to no, be no, at no, a no. point. No, what, I, I what I'm saying is that collectively we know that collectively we are wealthy if we put our money in one pot and are willing to, to do that. We know that. The history of us shows us that. But then there's a point where we don't trust each other or, or believe in each other enough. And I think, because it all goes back to the partner, because most of us were raised, whether we know it or not, on, on the, the, the partner hand, you know? And for last and first. Every holiday from my family was last and first. And you, you've, got, you've got a pair <laughs> of traders, you've got a, a trip to Jamaica. Last and first, Eddie, last and first. <laughs> and that is all it is, isn't it? It's, it's a big partner yeah but it, it's great to hear a different mindset sometimes i look at the comments of this and i say we, we, we kind of get people who are quite similar and actually we need to start talking to each other and challenge each other uh, we're not a homogenous lump and there are different ways that we we can all do it look it, it's 40 minutes over i really wanted to talk about subnormal if you haven't seen it get on and have a look at that program about how people from the Windrush uh, generation came over and because of their I remember the, the children, Eddie, you wanted to talk about the children. Yeah, I am good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. But I'm only do, doing this because I want to give Patrick uh, a, an opportunity to just of say... Of course. They're, they're not getting the money, Patrick. So you've highlighted yeah. it. We've got yeah. Windrush Day. We had Priti Patel as the Home Secretary, Sajid Javid before her... Uh, all mm. talking about how horrible this is, how much we are sorry, and how we will do whatever it takes to put it right. And money, it's again to the issue of money, and those guys are not getting it, and that's the big story today it, it, again. Yeah, I mean, what's, what's came out a few days ago, National Audit Office, which is a government agency, they audit the budgets of local of uh, central government. They all they looked at the budget of the Home Office to see how they spend that money, the compens and how they give that the compensation money. And again, it's terrible. It's, out, it's outrageous. Um, slow payments, you know, 15,000 outstanding cases, and they've only employed about half a dozen civil servants to do that. I mean, Excuse I mean, me, Patrick, is it true that we've lost 21 people have passed away it's who are waiting more, to be compensated? It's more, it's, it's more than 21. It's more than 21. I mean, you're not even to count people from who are in the Caribbean or even Africa. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think it's much more than that. I mean, basically, yeah. it's about Black Lives Matter. Now, the question is, if this was another race, would they get the same level of disrespect? You know, remember, over the last 15 months, we have given out trillions during COVID, just like that. Why has it taken two years to give out a few million quid? Yeah. That's the question. That's the question. Because they don't want to yeah i think it's being made as difficult as possible but there's a there's another story patrick i'm sure you'll be aware of. we can't get into it but, yeah. but if you haven't looked at the story of the sub postmasters that oh. is the uh, oh yes the biggest miscarriage of Brit of justice in british history involving over 900 people that story just breaks yeah. my heart but every time i look at that story it reminds me of windrush it is exactly i'm telling you i was born here educated this is a school i went to this is where i worked and you're telling yeah. me that what i'm telling you is a lie so it's the same thing pat look you'll come back right if we can uh, get uh, going yeah. please come back and i'll talk to you about you bella because i haven't mentioned it but we have to speak specifically to the issue of grief i give you my word it's so important you've been yeah. brilliant as i know that you as i knew sure. you would be and please come back and sit, just sit up straight so we can look at the t-shirt there you go how about this then yes they did Black Lives Matter. And obviously, next Tuesday, there's going to be some, Tuesday coming, there's going to be so many events. Just to make the final point uh, that we talked about, that with subnormal, a lot of the children that came to Britain in the 60s and 70s from the Caribbean, the, um, some of them uh, were class educators and not subnormal. And these were the ones that were left behind in the Caribbean. Patrick, the you're going to do it regardless of what I tell you. So we might as well do it. You're going to make this for <laughs> an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, uh, boss lady, let's play the short video so that everybody knows what Patrick's talking about.
please. Sorry, please. <laughs> Better add a please on the end. I know. <laughs> I know. It could be a, could be a serious the problem. Which black children were being sent to these schools was was pretty shocking. When I was told the, that there were schools for the education is subnormal called ESN schools, my immediate reaction was, what? What are you talking about? I'd never heard about this thing before. I noted ESN schools had a higher percentage of black kids than I considered normal given the demographics of the boroughs from which they came. And also, I saw too many kids that were clearly average intelligence or even above average. They thought that their inability to speak the Queen's English, as they used to call it, was, was, was because they were thick and unintelligent, as distinct from the fact that they were speaking a different language. Patrick. Yes, I do. Now, please say it. Now everybody knows what you're talking about. Okay, we're so... we're pointing everybody in the direction of it to watch it, if they haven't seen it. Yeah, I mean, it was a powerful, powerful documentary. I mean, I think I, I put something on Twitter a few days ago I, because I was born in the 60s, like yourself, Eddie. I know you're trying to play it down. <laughs> and you could. <laughs> Your daughter's born in the 50s. Donna, sort him out later. Um, so, but you know what? Um, if you were a black child, if you were born here or you came from the Caribbean or Africa, the vast majority of us was class, we were all class educated to normal. Yes. Some of us went to special schools, but a lot of us actually were put in those stupid dunce classes and remedial <laughs> classes. Not, not, not seriously, we're, a lot of us were put in there. I only remember. a handful of us, only a handful of us were able to do O levels and that kind of stuff. Can and you actually, say dunce anymore? Can we use that word? Why do you get any trouble, you know? Dunce. Yeah, but, actually, but, but you know, the, the schooling that we went through was brutal. Corporate punishment every single day long. Um, the way that we were chastised by the teachers, you know, it was overt discrimination in those places. And I think, I think, personally speaking, because I think we've all got the traumas of that. And I think going back to the point that Prince was talking about is if you've had a bad experience in school, it holds you back. It really does, actually. And unfortunately, some you know you might get caught up in whole kind of wrong making the wrong life choices. But the, the central point, because I know time is against us, is I think that a lot of the children that came from the Caribbean in the sixties, who are as the Windrush Generation children, they got caught up again with the Windrush scandal. So, for example, Michael Breathwaite from Islington, I know, who've got to know very well. Uh, he, when he came over as a child, um, he was left behind. Came over to Britain, um, and he, you know, and it's you know, when you're left behind, it's that's emotional trauma, you know, the whole stuff from the emotional attachment that you've not, you've lost connections with your, with your, with your, with your mother or your father. You've been raised by auntie or somebody else, and then you're brought over to the UK, and then 50 years later, you find out that you are going to be kicked out of Britain because you haven't got passport to prove that you're British because you, you know you may have not have travelled and therefore you've, you, and that you've been re-traumatised again because of the hostile environment policy so there's a lot that, I mean a lot of the victims are traumatised three times over and you have the Home Office which basically is less empathetic the, their main job is to deport people and to make, make it difficult for people to stay in Britain I, but I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think I have to stop there but I think you're absolutely right that they've made so much publicity a great photo op for her with somebody foreign looking being escorted from a building today much more perhaps out of the idea of sending jamaicans or whoever back than by compensating uh, those uh, who have been wronged and maybe by highlighting it we could we can make a difference patrick please keep doing what you're doing as i say it, it's fabulous um i'll contact you and we'll talk about you barely because you barely have uh, helped us um here on no joke and we will absolutely spend some time talking about grief and trauma uh, please keep yeah. doing what you do i don't know where you get the energy from but please keep doing what you're doing yeah no, and guys, you've done a fantastic job. There's not many platforms like this where you can, you know, we need to have more black media. Yeah. We need to have more black spaces for conversations that we can control and curate. So keep up the good job, guys. Really, is respect. Thank you very, very much. Um, Patrick, God bless. Thank Look you, after Patrick. yourself. Okay, well cheers. Done, Patrick. 
I, 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 I met a guy right, who I used to interview um, on the tube and I went up to him and he must have thought I was going to take him. This is taken on from what Eric was talking about. Right. So Eric is talking about, so this, this book here, right? Um, Young Money is a guy called Martin Lewis. I don't know from, um, he, 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 Money he, Man, he, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he sold his company for a hundred million uh, pounds or something. And I went up to him on the tube, a hundred million pounds on, on the tube. And he's promised to send me a book and he sent me this book. And it's all about young money because the one thing I'm, if it ever comes out and I want to talk to him about is how, how do you talk to your children about money? Because the idea that I can't buy them the biscuit in the shop, uh, like my mum couldn't, but I can buy them. But every yeah. time we go out, especially the seven-year-olds, daddy, daddy he'd be, he be still trying to steal, start picking up, yeah. daddy, we're taking it. I'm like, no. I, and that's my toughest job to teach my children at the value of money. So, I mean, I think fabulous guest today. Let's get Boss Lady teach on. Them to pay bills. Well. I think what people have said to me is the 12 year old should be getting pocket money so that at least he has an idea of uh, budgeted. But Miss Lady, uh, the boss lady, as Slim said, won't give him any money. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what's he going to be spending, up, spending it on? We provide him with everything. But no, after listening to Eric, um, yeah, I think yes. we need to have the money talk. I mean, he's got to know about money. If he doesn't get it, how's he going to? Learning. You gave him but the I, sex talk before be you gave chores. him the money. It should talk. be about that ethical. Yeah, because he was going to the park money. to meet a, a lady friend. But no, when I got my first wages at sixteen, <laughs> I bought a leather coat down Petticoat Lane. I didn't know how to invest you know, my money because that yeah. was my first job. Don't get me wrong; I had to give my mum money every week, no matter whether I earned five pound, ten pound, or fifty pound. I had to give her money every yeah, week. That's right. But you know. Our children are different. They have more than we have. They don't come yeah. from where we have. So how do you teach them about money and respect? You're, you're going that? to have to do better than you're doing. <laughs> we are. We have to. <laughs> Donna, you get a, you, do you get a handbag pocket money? No. How old is a handbag? 12. It's going to be 13 this year. <laughs> you don't give in the boy. What age money? will you start giving them money? I don't give. I don't believe in giving children money like that. I think if they if they're going out, they get money. <laughs> well, they what I mean, the their car, fathers they do. Wish to play. Like, yeah, they get an, they get an allowance. Said, they get an <laughs> allowance for which they are accountable for how they spend it, and and they the, all three of them are very wise about money management. I get my seventeen year old to do my invoices, so he sees what I have to pay for. He sees how much I earn. Fantastic. I think it's part of the literacy. Get it to be part of their everyday interaction, knowing yeah. what things cost. And you know, I think you'll be surprised like how, how many of them, to get all of these things. How many of them are, are where Eric's head is in regards of a lot of the young people I know are on that stock and doing little deals online and doing their kind of um, stock market playing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think what, to take, yeah, but to take their money and go and buy 140 pound trainers? No. No. Do you know what? Can I say this? Can I just, no. I, don't, I think sometimes. No, no, no. My 17 year old, my 17 year old took his money. He was doing, he did some investments. He took his yeah. money. When he started his A-levels, he bought all of his technical equipment. There was only one thing me and his father had to buy. So his investment right. and his hard work went to buying the tools that he needed for his A-level course. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Getting him to understand that money is not just about £120 trainers, but it's also about buying yourself the skills and the tools that you need to do whatever it is so, you need well, to you, do. But that sounds brilliant. But the reality of it is they are more influenced by their peer group than what you as an I old don't know. No, you I ain't don't... got no fashion sense. Why would, what do you know about fashion? Why are your children going to listen to you when it comes to fashion? They're looking this is at what their I'm No, no, Eddie, Eddie, honestly. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not like how we were raised, you know, but I talk to my children. Like, I have a relationship with them. I think yeah. this is... You don't have to <laughs> talk yeah. to them. They're humans speak, too. Speak to Eddie. Speak to Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. A couple of uh, school as well. Eddie, like yeah, uh, no, what, so what do you do with money that they get for birthdays? And they take, take it. it. You, you take, take it. it. They and save take it. it. Give me what do you do with it? You take it. <laughs> They save it. So <laughs> this is the kind of foolish conversation. This is how they open a the car. They do, open it do, like that, and then they no, go like that. No, <laughs> that's no, no. Top hat, they just put the card down. <laughs> no, I want to hear, Jonah. What do you do with it, Jonah? Do they get to keep it? Do they have to save a portion of it? What do they do with that? They get their money and they naturally save it. 
I'm not I, out of the, out of the three of us. So I co-parent with two children's fathers. I'm not the one who will say how much money have you got left, but the dads will, and yeah. because they know that they can say what well, I oh I bought a tra- bought a tracksuit for myself. They're like, they're accountable for what they have. If we don't start that at an early age, how are they at 18? I mean, they've been managing their own money since what 12, 13. How are they going to suddenly one day wake up and know? Oh, I can. It's about having that 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 mind. And maybe my pe- I've been working since I was nine. I helped my mum cl- do e- uh, early morning and late evening cleaning. Cleaning, and yeah. All of my wow. wages went to buy my first flat. So I think maybe in wow. my family, this kind of financial literacy happened a long time ago. But I'm, I did like what the other speakers said because that's where I'm at. We need to stop going with our begging bowls. And yeah. as a community, we can do this. Yeah, I, I think so. Right, we're going to finish because this show yeah. is clear. That we, we have, no, no, hold on. Let me just let me do a couple of fun things. I mean, when I say we've got to finish, it's still another six minutes, isn't it? <laughs> to an hour <laughs> no i've got another meeting in two minutes right about george floyd on the right remember when you go went to hospital and that's what you got guys and yeah, great made you sick you went to hospital and that's what we got that cured we, cancer absolutely and if you took off the plastic and put it over the telly you had a color telly that's right what do you reckon? Uh, this is this is my workplace. <laughs> it's it's very cold and dark at the BBC at the minute. Oh boy. wow! That that is a story, isn't it? That yeah. is a story of itself. And, and he's what is like, it with you guys at the beep? Why are you like yeah. so much lies? Curtis, Curtis let, it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Fifty years old and got a baby. Actually, she's gonna be tired. Except she got day nanny, afternoon nanny, and nighttime nanny. I mean, if you've got mm-hmm. money like that, you can do it, can't you? You can have it at any age if you've got money like that. Hundred percent. Because, um, as an older parent, boss lady, how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> right. You talking to me? <laughs> we're going to a concert, dinner. Right. We're going to a concert. You can see everybody that's there, right? Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah, you can see. Right. Which concert are you going to, Don? Bob's and maybe Biggie's. And, no, and, and you get one. Hey, that's you how you one. are with food. You get one. We be trying to take two and three for. <laughs> oh, I don't know. There's not many people on here. Is that Michael Jackson in the middle? <laughs> yes. All right. I'd want to see. Oh, I can't choose. Oh, for people. goodness sake. Curtis, show her how we make decisions decisive. Prince. Which one are you going to? Prince. Prince. Boss lady, like how, which one you going Mike, to? Prince. Michael, ja- Michael Jackson. Mm. Which I one are you going to, you know. Eddie? It was all a dream. I used to use What Up magazine. I'm going to be. You better learn the words before you go. Uh, <laughs> <shut up. laughs> <Shut up. laughs> <laughs> You're that one in the concert, throw the eyes up. That's right. What the that's hell that. are you singing? That's right. It's a different <laughs> song. <laughs> um, Donna, we've gone around the houses. Can we come back to you now, please? Quickly. Okay. Which concert yeah. are you going to? Oh, which one would I choose? Oh, um, I'll forget it. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. I'm looking at the comments, Eddie. Most people are saying Bob. Really? Yeah, I'd want Bob. Yeah, Bob Marley. 19, this is a year of anniversary. Oh, Nin- 1981, brilliant. he passed. 1981, uh, riots. 30 years of real McCoy. 50 years of what's <laughs> going on. The album. Eight, this is a year of anniversary. Right. They're alone in the car, and it's the new outdoor. Have you seen people driving their car on their I've own? I don't like, understand what was no, going no, on. No, 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 no. Let me explain it to you. You're oh, not oh, here we go. You're exactly. not supposed to touch your mask. Right. So if you go in and out of a shop and you take it off, you, you don't touch it. I mean, don't, I don't drive with it in the car, but technically you shouldn't touch your mask with your hand because you've touched the shop door. Yeah, but no? usually you've got the sanitizer in your car. You do that and take it off. You, you do crazy. it wrong, guys. You just Every let the silence see somebody, off. I look in the back of their car to see if they're an Uber or maybe they're an Uber. <laughs> and I'm looking just, and they're on their own in the car. Like they don't trust their own breath. <laughs> I would have just let silence come after that, foolishly. That's why I like Curtis. Yeah, you clearly. clearly, (laughs) That's why I like Curtis. Clearly, yes. yes. Donna, you all right, man? I I can't even see these. Album covers. Right, the way way people use, if you want to have a good album cover that makes you lean lean back and lie down. Yeah. A, can I just shout out to the, there's a lady that comes on H and H. You know who you are, Annie G, and she does this pose on camera, and it causes a lot of disturbance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, my time for tuning. Tell us when it is again. H and H is going to be on Tuesday. 
H and H Tuesdays and Thursdays is back on. When you right, so who, <laughs> you, who used to have that at their school? Where the telly cover from the thing, and then they used to wheel it into the room. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Mary Poppins again, yes. <laughs> and last one, because you know this is my favourite part of the show. Last one, right? All the things we used to do on this. Oh wow! What is it? So that's it's, my it's, first microwave. That's, that's, a a Cali- Cali- that's the Caligas. That's my first microwave. That's that's, that's, that's paraffin heater. Paraffin, oh, sorry, not Caligas. That's, that's, pa- that's paraffin. Oh, Wait, when you have to oh. when you have to walk what? to the shop and buy the paraffin and. Boom, 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 boom. And so bring, bring it home. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you, yeah, what, we used to a bowl of water and then put my granddad's, like a, like a, what do they call it? Bambari now. That's how we used to keep his dinner hot until he came home from his shift on one of those. <laughs> a bam, a bambari. <laughs> You're so old. Did you used to put the hot comb on it as well? Ooh. Did the hot comb not go on that? The hot no, no, the cooker, the hot on the cooker. On the cooker. It went on the cooker. Oh. Did you burn, have you, one of your burns on your foot, Donna, does it come from one of these? Yes, because I, can, I because I can't hear and I'm sliding up in the holes and she tell me, Donna, stop all the ramping up and down. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, you got it. Uh, listen, um, as I say, you know, it's, it's um, one of those days, guys. Uh, wow, what a show. Where, where, when okay. um, Mark yeah. was on it, it took me to a place I could feel it. I, I mean, and I, I, what, to go through what he's gone through and turn it into something uh, like that. Patrick is just like, Around, you. Ev- he's in everything. Patrick is in everything, trying to he's help. Just like you, Eddie. Did the no, two of you sit down no. and have a little quick chat? No, he's he's different. He's different level. Honestly, a whole different level. It, 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 we'd struggle without people like him, if I'm honest with you. And, and then to have Eric come on and just, I think he's the one who's put things in our head to make. Actually, yeah. you know what I mean? If you got yeah. ten pound and you put two pound away every week, then in the end you could take that twenty pound. And do, that's how the partner works, isn't it? Exactly yeah. how the partner mm-hmm. uh, well, Except, well, what did we take the partner money and buy? The sofa? The stereo? What yeah. did your partner money buy, Curtis? Holiday. Everything. I didn't do partner, but my parents are probably everything. I remember we were talking about the other day, at the age of seven, they took three children with them to Jamaica. And that was a partner draw, first and last. Because we were saying, wow, we must be poorly. But then mm. mum explained. Yeah. How many of you last. came back? How many of you came back? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Listen, God bless you. Uh, boss lady, thank you very much. I can see all the messages coming in, but we're way ridiculously over time. Thank you so much, boss lady. Really, uh, really appreciate it. Love your top. Uh, Donna, uh, also your top is... Um, why, does you, why does it look different when you do that? Uh, anyway, sit down. Please sit down, boss lady. Thank you. Oh. Um, <laughs> Donna, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to fix you up next week, but God bless you, babe. Love you. Well done for your thing. Uh, keep doing what you're you're doing. H and H Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Oh gosh, Curtis. Later. Right. Thank you, boss lady. Thank you, Donna. The the story that, that they've been talking about, which is, uh, I've seen about five different videos of uh, black children apparently being abducted. abducted. There was clearly a story. <laughs> There's clearly a story about a white van. Uh, our reporter went to the police and said, yes, that was a story, but they don't have the, the dozens of stories that it feels as though there is. We've got another um, conversation with the police tomorrow. I promise you I'm looking at that. And one of the things with that story that always makes me a bit weird was that that, that if my child was abducted, I would be I would be making the video. There are lots of people making the video. There's certainly an issue, but hopefully by next week I will be able to tell you what the yeah, issue is. But, but needless to say, regardless of what is going on, it is probably a good time to just make sure, put that tracker on their phone, make sure that we know where they are, and just, just diligently uh, apply a little more due diligence. And, and that's quite a sensible With thing. With your children. Probably. Yeah, and I your nieces so. and your nephews and your cousins. Remember, we're yeah. all related, man. We've got to look out for each other's children. If you see yeah, something yeah. happening, you as an individual, you've got to make a, some kind of move, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's, that's, that's what we're people film stuff happening. Get involved. Unfortunately, we've stopped getting involved in a safe way. I know you're going to tell me about dangerous and all that, but please. Yeah, I yeah, mean, no, I, you're right. Kill me, what? Yeah, oh, yeah. I was at um, something alert, wasn't sure. it? Sure. 
Shaw, Shaw Taylor. Shaw Taylor. Shaw Taylor. There you go. Yeah, police. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, listen, mate. God bless you. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Great show, Eddie. Well done. Thank you. No, thank you, Curtis. Look after thank yourself. You. No, no. God spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Do you and Patrick do um, answer receive messages? Bye bye. bye. <laughs> it wouldn't be 45 pound. It'd be about 12 pence. <laughs> and that's a cheap shot as you were going, Curtis. <laughs> I expect more from you than that. Uh, um, look, a couple of things. Please follow Boss Lady on Instagram. She just qualified as a PT um, and she's doing a cooking course. So I'm hoping that she will qualify as somebody who can cook as well. <laughs> No, Lisa Donestor on Instagram. Um, also, thank you very much to our guest, to Patrick, to Mark, to Eric. Thank you very much. I don't have to say thank you to Donna and Curtis because they're on it, you know. And certainly we carry on until the 20th of June. And on the 20th of June is the second day in a big push for uh, the ACL, the African Caribbean Leukemia Trust, to get people to donate uh, blood. It's a part of it. You see there's a theme to the show. It's about us working together for uh, each other. Uh, also, so thank you very much to um, Orin and to Bev. Uh, for that. I've got to tell you, my brother from another mother, uh, he's on from five to seven, so mastermind, got some proper foolishness on there, asking questions. Uh, it's a bit of a community on there, so please follow uh, the legendary mastermind, also known as Lewis Ben, uh, on there. I'm so sorry. I can see that. It's ridiculous. It's an hour show. It will be an hour next week, yeah? So apologies for going uh, over time, but thank you very much for your support, and until next week, hashtag no joke. In this day and age, it is unacceptable for someone to have to call 999 from their hospital bed. It sounds crazy, right? But that's what Evan Nathan Smith had to do. If he was given a blood transfusion when he needed it, it was likely that would have saved his life. We are United by Blood, three black organizations that have come together to say to the black community, we need, we need you. you. We need you. I'm from ACLT. Black mums up front. I'm from Selfie for Life. Less than 1% of our community donates blood. Although sickle cell is one of the fastest growing blood disorders in our community and requires regular blood donations. We need you. We need you. And we need you on the 19th and 20th of June to join us at United by Blood, donating in memory of Evan Nathan Smith. Saturday, 19th of June. And Sunday, the 20th of June. Will, Will we see, see you there? there?